on today's show, Ime Udoka pushes back on the idea that Jalen Green is succeeding because of Alper and Shingun's injury, why that duo does work, and how excited Rockets fans should be moving forward, plus Amin Thompson's role and impact and how he has unlocked some new things for this Rockets team since being inserted into the starting lineup, and the Rockets living rent-free in Draymond Green's head. It's all coming up on today's Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian, a credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin and the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts, including YouTube. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And as always, thank you so much for making Locked On Rockets part of your day every single day. Thank you for being an everydayer, whether it's on your way to work, on your lunch break, in the gym. Thank you for making the show part of your day every single day. Joining us now is your weekly co-host, none other than the pod father himself, Rockets Wire editor and host of the Logger Line podcast, Ben DuBose. You can track down on Twitter at Ben DuBose. And Ben, we've got a, a variety, a little smorgasbord of Rockets topics to tackle today. We're going to focus on some of the discussions surrounding Jalen Green and Alper and Shingu, that duo. Can they be successful in the future? Is Jalen Green's recent newfound success because Alper and Shingu went down due to injury? Uh, spoiler alert, it's not as you're shaking your head. Yeah, we're, we're going to kind of debunk that a little bit. The second time we've had to debunk it here on the show, even Ime Udoka commenting on that duo and what they should hopefully be able to achieve together in the future. We're also going to talk a little bit about Amin Thompson's role, his impact, and how he kind of factors in as a trio alongside Jalen Green and Alperin Shagood. And then good old friend of the program, Draymond Green. Rockets are currently living rent-free in the back of Draymond Green's head, and it is a wonderful thing to see take place. So let's start with... He doesn't ben. care about the Rockets. <laughs> right? He, he doesn't... Where, where's my Where's my Draymond clip? No, I don't give a damn about the Rockets. <laughs> there we go. He, he doesn't give a damn about the Rockets. Clearly... Two days later. That's yeah. not the truth. We're going to tackle that a little bit later on in the show. Uh, shout out to Tari Eason as well. Um, all right. So, Ben, let's start with the Jalen Shingun stuff, because this has been like a running dialogue with Rockets fans. The moment Alper and Shingen went down and it kind of directly coincided with Jalen Green's resurgent performance this season, the fact that he's really taking off, looking like a star level player, playing like the best player in the NBA over these last few weeks. And we've already discussed this once, but, you know, a couple times before here on the show, uh, either with Madison or with Ali Khan, but it's not, I think it's disingenuous to even remotely suggest that Jalen Green's, you know, upward bounds leap the way that he's playing as of late is a direct result because of Alper and Shingun going down due to injury because we 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 saw these two I test matches this we saw these two already playing better together post all-star break yeah absolutely the Rockets tweaked their offense at the all-star break and a lot of these trends were already in place by the time Shingun went out on March 10th and look Jalen will be the first to tell you he missed a lot of shots early in the season that he thinks he should make now they're going in. I really think it's largely as simple as that. Look, Alper and Shingun is not the type of plotting big man who you just stick on the low block and you can make this argument that he's theoretically in the way. No, the Rockets already use Shingun fairly creatively when it comes to the mid post, the high post, behind the three-point arc a lot of the time. So it's not like when Alper and Shingun is in the game, it's almost like this caricature that's been put out there by people that don't really follow the Rockets of, oh, he's this traditional big man and he's just clogging the space. No, that's not how he operates. And as far as the touches argument, does Jalen need more rhythm to get going? Look, he had plenty of shot attempts, even with Shingun in the lineup. I don't think that all of a sudden the few extra shots he's got since Shingun went out on the 10th has changed this dramatically. No, I think they fundamentally tweaked a few things with his mechanics. His usage was already being changed since the All-Star break. They're playing with more pace, which Amen Thompson is helping a bit with as well. I know we'll get to that. 
these are all things independent of Alper and Shingun. I just feel like largely the discussion has sort of made Shingun out to be a caricature, an old school big man that you just stick on the low block and he's just getting in the way. That's not the way the Rockets with Shingun functioned. And quite frankly, the first two thirds of the season, Jalen had opportunities. They just weren't going in. Credit to Jalen and the coaching staff for continuing to work. And since the All-Star break, the changes have taken off. And if you dive into the data, you can see they were already taking off before Shingun got injured. And you don't have to take it from us. Um, you could take it from us because that's how we feel about it. But that's also how head coach Ime Udoka feels about it. And he said just as much when he was uh, chatting with uh, Matt Thomas and Ross Villarreal on the Matt Thomas show uh, just the other day. And, and some of this resurgent ha- resurgence has coincided with Alper and Shingun's injury. How much of it is an oversimplification to, to say that one led to the other? And just curious your thoughts of, of me- meshing and maximizing the abilities of both in the floor. Yeah, I don't think there's a direct correlation. I think um, he, we were playing much faster coming out of All-Star break. I think, um, you know, we went 4-1 and one without P out of All-Star break, and our pace had increased, um, you know, times two almost. And so now we're playing even faster. Uh, the one thing you could say is he may have more touches, uh, you know, obviously with uh, out the post presence of Alpi, but our pace was the same with Alpi. I think um, we wanted to really increase that, get the threes up, all those things don't have anything to do with Alperin except for the crowd that he he attracts. And so some of the kickout threes that he initiates for guys out of the post, that's a great thing that Alperin does. But, um, you know, for for that being the case, I think they both can complement each other very well. And even when Jalen was struggling earlier in the year, he had the same quality looks. He was, he was you know, he's starting to read things better. So I think they can complement each other very well. And the pace and the threes and the offensive rebound, those things were, were being done with Alperin and still. Now, look, I, I think it's it's straight from Ime Odoka's mouth to your ears, right? They complement each other perfectly. And I think we've seen that. That was one of the few bright spots across this Rockets rebuild for the first two years during that, you know, that Steven Silas era is we saw flashes of what that two-man game looked like between Jalen Green and Alperin Shingu. Now, I will say that earlier this season, I, well, the, the, the touches argument I do think is legitimate because – while Jalen's overall like shot attempts were were not they didn't drop off considerably. I think there's a difference right between shot attempts and actual touches, right? Rhythm, feel for the game, having the ball in your hands, running the offense, steering things. And Jalen was kind of you know pushed off more so to an off ball role earlier this season to where he would start games and so much of the offense was running through Alperin Shingun and Fred Van Vliet, that steady two man game diet that we saw early on. And then Jalen would be kind of relegated to that third or sometimes even fourth or fifth option offensively, depending on how Jabari and Dylan looked on a given game. And then he would kind of be thrown back into the fire with that second unit and expected to produce. And that can be really tough mentally to not get your usual touches, to not be in a rhythm to start the game, and then to be expected to come in and suddenly knock down shots or or cook with the second unit. So there was a lot there was a learning curve for Jalen. There was a you know a lot of growth that had to go into this, but I think to sit here and try and say that, that this team is better without Alper and Shingun or that these two guys can't coincide, that they can't, that their success can't coincide with one another and that they can't complement each other is just so far from the case. And for me, it comes down to nuance. Look, I can accept that maybe there's an extra level that Jalen can get to at least now based on the rhythm argument that you're making. But it's not everything. It did not take him from a guy who was below average for the first two thirds of this season in terms of his efficiency, his overall production to a guy who has been absolutely elite since the All-Star break. It's not that a lot of the improvement was already being made before Shingun was out. Now, can you argue that at least in the short term, maybe Jalen is better off and gets from, you know, very good to great based on the Shingun injury? I guess I think you can certainly make an argument, but what I reject is the framing that I've seen on social media and amongst some corners of um, Rockets fans that all it took to get Jalen from where he was for the first two thirds of this season to where he is now is for Shingun to leave. That is way overly simplistic. It's not accurate. I think to a small degree, the extra rhythm, the touches might help, but look, there's a lot more to the game than that. There's been, a lot of references to Jalen's percentages on wide open threes, which have and had improved dramatically even before the Shingun injury relative to earlier in the year. And these are wide open threes that are generated based on the attention drawn by Alperin Shingun. So, no, I don't buy the idea that Jalen shooting 
25, 30%, whatever terrible number it was early in the year from three wide open, that that's something that's all for Shingun's fault. How because dare he needs rhythm. LP make Jalen miss those shots earlier this year? Yeah, <laughs> that, or, or that, that Jalen needs rhythm to make wide open shots. No, he knows he should make those, and he was, you know, he just had a bad stretch. And lots of players, they go through slumps. And with Jalen, I know they've tried to do some things to improve his mechanics. And, you know, credit to the team, the coaching staff, they've done that. But Jalen Green is not going to point the finger at Alper and Shingun for missing wide open threes, which was a big part of why the first half of the season was as ugly as it was at times. And so, again, it comes down to nuance. Could you make the argument to an extent that at least for now, Jalen is still learning and that rhythm helps get him, you know, a higher ceiling perhaps to where it, it allows him to have like a 37 point game like he did in that amazing win at OKC? Maybe, but it is not an explanation for the dramatic change overall. It might move the needle a little, but the vast majority of it just comes down to Jalen playing and executing better. That's all it is. And speaking of that nuance, I, there's still some more points on this kind of Jalen Shingun discussion that I want to tackle before we kind of move into it. And, and it kind of dovetails and goes goes hand in hand with the conversation that we're also going to have about Amin Thompson and his impact and role as of late, the way that he stepped up in the absence of Alper and Shingun and what this trio could actually look like on the floor together moving forward for this Rockets team. We're going to get to that and so much more here in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. You know, been over the course of this win streak, this Rockets team has strung together some incredible wins. Obviously, the biggest game that we've seen in a few years, that win on the road against a very, very good OKC team. Yes, without SGA, but the Rockets clearly not at full strength either. Huge win on the road. There have been pockets, though, throughout this win streak where we've seen this team actually still stagnate and struggle and have some points where offensively things didn't look great, right? Namely, we can go to that second win uh, against the Portland Trailblazers, the most recent one, where the, they looked so bogged down offensively, like they were just really couldn't get anything going. Jalen struggled in that first half. Yes, he, he responded, had a much better second half, and the Rockets were able to ultimately pull out what looked like a blowout win at the end, but it looked far from that to start the game. And I think the important thing to note here is in the NBA landscape, it's important to have counters on counters on counters. It's important to have multiple different ways, multiple avenues to win games. And having a guy like Alper and Shoot and having a guy like Jalen Green playing the way that he has as of late, these are two different guys that give you different avenues to try and win basketball games, right? You can play through Alper and Shigun, and he can single-handedly win you a game. Right now, you can play through Jalen Green, and he can almost single-handedly win you a basketball game. And then you add those two guys as a two-man game, as a tandem, playing with each other, playing off of one another, they make each other's lives easier. That's the part that I really don't understand with people trying to make it a Shingun versus Jalen argument. Yeah. We have seen just how effective that two-man game can be. And when you have a big that is as skilled and as gifted as Alper and Shingun as a playmaker, as a finisher, can do the variety of things that he can do on the floor and you pair that with a dynamic guard like Jalen Green who can score at all three levels who puts so much immense pressure on the defense when he's getting downhill it's unguardable and the only reason it was it what didn't look great earlier this season is like we already said Jalen Green had a really rough year right for two-thirds of the season it was bad and so if Jalen had been playing like this all year that Jalen Shingun duo would have had the Rockets as a top six team in the Western Conference I feel incredibly confident in saying that right now if Jalen had been playing like this the entire year this team was a Jalen or is or was not not even is was it, because they are that he has it now he has made the leap it feels like this is something permanent like this is something that is going to stick and so now it feels like this team is ready to take that significant leap next season I I know they're vying for that final playing spot right now, but 
you could run this exact team back next year, and I feel so yeah. confident about their chances to be a legit playoff, you know, not not legit contender, but a legit like top six Same. playoff team next year. Same. I think they could get in the playoff field as currently constructed, plus Steven Adams and with the return of Tari Eason as well, yeah. just as constructed. Not quite to the title tier. Not going to say that they're the thunder just yet in terms of an evolution to that extent that it accelerates that quickly, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. And a realistic scenario is, yeah, you're in the middle of the Western conference playoff field next season. I think that's absolutely doable with the level we're seeing right now from Jalen green. But what I will say that game in Oklahoma city, as fun as it was, as thrilling as it was, I don't know how you can objectively watch that game and not see the clear need for all per inch and goon, because look, Jalen played out of his mind in that game as great as Jalen is right now. I don't think you can rely on him to shoot like 60 plus percent every game and 60% on threes as well. Seven of 11. It took Jalen green having an out of this world game just to keep the Rockets close and give them a chance down the stretch. Now down the stretch, give them credit. I was mostly Jalen leading the way and making plays, but you know, Dylan hit a couple of big threes. You also had a, uh, Jabari hit, obviously, the one in regulation and another in overtime. But for most of that game, the half-court offense was ugly. And, you know, let's give credit to Oklahoma City. Them missing SGA was a factor on offense. But defensively, they're still a very good team. The foundation is there with or without SGA. And the Rockets had trouble for a lot of that game. If not for Jalen playing out of his mind, the Rockets easily could have lost that game by 15 points. And I think a lot of it's because the current model is so skewed towards high volume three point shooting and maybe Cam Whitmore returning. It sounds like he's close could help this a little bit, but there's just not a lot of creativity outside of Jalen. And when other teams can double and trap and put all of their resources on a guy like Jalen and other guys aren't making their open threes, which happens from time to time, three point shooting does tend to be volatile then you're going to have some games where it gets sticky in the half court. It gets ugly. And that's what we generally saw on Wednesday in Oklahoma City. Now, it didn't matter because Jalen bailed him out. But as great as Jalen's been, I don't think you can count on that version of Jalen every single time. That was something of an outlier. So the good news for the Rockets is that most of the teams that they're going to play coming up are not nearly as good defensively as Oklahoma City. For example, the Jazz on Friday night, nowhere near as good as OKC. So perhaps those other guys get going more against weaker competition. But in terms of the Jalen Shingun dynamic, the OKC game was a perfect example of why you need another high level creator in the half court to sort of be a relief valve when option one, even if Jalen is your option one, and he certainly is right now. Well, there's value in having an option two that you can really trust to go out there and make plays and just, you know, win one-on-one -on -one battles because right now, uh, the Rockets are so dependent on Jalen, and as great as he was on Wednesday, I don't think we can quite count on that version every time out. Now, speaking of like the offensive creativity, I think one area that we have to highlight and give a lot of credit to is the way that Ime Odoka has deployed Amin Thompson in the absence of Alperin Shingun. Now, he's not quite the threat that Alperin Shingun is, right? He's not a threat one-on-one -on -one to just go out there and get his and score at nearly the level that Alperin Shingun can, so he doesn't put that kind of pressure on a defense, but he is doing a great job putting pressure on defenses in a variety of ways, right? We've talked about it before, but the way that, you know, he kind of started off you know, Ime would run him like in the dunker spot, kind of probing the baseline, looking for his chances for for lob offensive threat. rebounds, lob threat. Absolutely. But now we're starting to see the offense evolve even further with Amin Thompson kind of playing that pseudo center spot for this Rockets team without Alper and Shingun on the floor. Right. Sometimes, yes, they'll use Jabari Smith Jr. as a primary screening threat. But Jabari's not nearly the threat to roll to the rim and do something with the ball because he's kind of offensively limited in that regard, right? Jabari is more or less, he's a play finisher. He can catch the ball and he can either pick and pop from the mid-range or pick and pop at the three-point line, but he's not a rolling threat to the rim. He's not somebody that's going to play over the top of the defense. Amin Thompson gives you that. And I think that we've seen him grow increasingly more and more comfortable with that role of being a screen setter, rolling to the rim, and then making plays for this team out of the middle of the floor. We're also seeing the growing pains with it, right? He had a lot of turnovers a couple games ago against the Blazers. 
And there's certain moments where he looks indecisive, like he's not 100% sure what he's doing. But there's also moments where you're like, wow, he just knows how to make things happen on the floor. Like he just gets the ball and does stuff like that incredible uh, broken play where he got the offensive rebound against OKC, dribbled it around the free throw line and just pulled up for a mid-range shot and like kind of helped, right? So he can be a guy that I think, even though you're not going to exclusively run stuff through him in Thompson, he can be a guy that you can do some creative things with offensively. And I think that the Rockets have done a lot of creative things with him since inserting him to the starting lineup. I do as well. And I also think that this is something that can be inserted into the Jalen Shingoon dynamic next season that for the most part was not this season. And that's an important thing to remember. I go back to an article that Kelly Eco wrote on March 8th. This was before the Shingoon injury. And actually, this was the day the streak started in Portland. It's not a topic that dominates daily conversations, although Green has spoken to Whitmore and fellow rookie Amen Thompson about maximizing their deadly combination of size, speed, power, and talent, especially in the open court. And that's largely what they've done. Besides the creative ways that Ime can deploy him in the half court, the biggest thing is that you now have two freakish athletes in your starting lineup. And so Jalen has someone else to run with in transition to help push that pace to get him opportunities early in the shot clock. And, you know, Amen does so many different things. I mean, yes, he's still valuable in the half court. Uh, he can cut. He can pound the offensive glass. He can make plays on the short roll. All of that is super valuable. We know what he does defensively. But then the impact that he has on pace is something that for Jalen in particular, when you look at the starting lineup for most of this season, Jalen is the only, I would say, upper tier athlete between in an NBA context. Let's not get crazy. I mean, th these guys are all like great athletes in a general population sense. But when we're talking about an NBA athletes, Fred, Jalen, Dylan, Jabari, and Shingoon, Jalen is the only elite athlete amongst those. And so when other teams are trying to limit the Rockets in transition, Jalen's the guy they can concentrate all of their resources on, and you can take away what he wants to do, what he does best, as opposed to if there's another guy with those types of gifts. And I think that's what Green was referring to, wanting more playing time with uh, a men in cam, two of your top athletes. It becomes much more difficult to stop. And where this is important to note with the Shingun dynamic, yes, a men replaced Shingun in the starting lineup because he was the next best option, but you could easily replace Jabari with a men. You could replace Dylan with a men. You could even replace Fred with a men, with Jalen, I guess, being the primary ball handler in that, in, in that configuration and still have many of the same benefits. Now you can point out, well, would the Rockets be able with a men and Shingun to make an offense work where two guys aren't consistent three-point shooters? I mean, that's a fair question, but the truth is, I mean, with the men and Shingun, they both need to work on their three-point shot. We knew this already. This was already true. This was already going to be a point of emphasis for both of those players this offseason and beyond. In terms of how the offense works and the benefits of uh, the transition play, crashing the glass, lob threat, there's no reason why you couldn't, and it doesn't have to be one guy. The point is you can, you know, play a men in a lot of different configurations, but there's no reason it has to be a men for Shingun. You could put a men in for one of these other guys as well and still have those benefits. The bottom line is I think Jalen benefits a lot from having a second elite athlete out there on the floor with him. If you think back to his year two jump relative to year one, I think one thing that helped Jalen become a bit more efficient last year, look at the true shooting numbers. Who started most of last season? K.J. Martin. And I think that was a good fit for Jalen. Now, I'm not comparing K.J. to a man. A man is a much better player. All I'm saying is in terms of the fit, in terms of what Jalen needs to sort of uh, play to his strengths, particularly the elite athleticism, the transition play, I do think having another elite athlete unlocks part of the floor for him. And so a men for Shingun has helped in that regard. But that's where I reject that it's about Shingun. I think you could have many of the same benefits, even if theoretically it was a men for somebody else. To me, it's more about Jalen and a men than it is Jalen and not Shingun. Final thoughts on this Rockets trifecta, Jalen, Amin, and Shingun, as well as we've got to uh, revisit with our good friend of the program, Draymond Green, and his uh, <laughs> concerns or lack thereof about the Houston Rockets. We're going to get there in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. 
Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the very next corner? Well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call in for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone, Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3 inch HD touchscreen at your fingertips. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure, but hey, Maybe you want a little bit more space, right? The 2024 Nissan Pathfinder has room for up to eight and expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability with 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds towing capacity. When adventure calls, the Pathfinder is right there to answer. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, the college basketball tournament, or the NBA playoffs, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us right here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive in to all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. And final segment here at Locked On Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. You know, it's, it's funny that we're having this discussion, Ben, because I remember at one point kind of jokingly uh, post All-Star break making the uh, you know, on social media or whatever, saying something along the lines of, you know, it was the 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 tired take was benching Jalen for a Min Thompson, and the wired take was benching Dylan Brooks for a Min Thompson because a Min is just a guy very similar to Tari Easton in a way, right? When he's out on the floor, this is not a guy that gets plays called for him. This is not a guy that you know is a featured focal point of the Rockets' offense. Yes, sometimes he has the ball in his hands and he gets the opportunity to make decisions with the ball in his hands. Very few and far between, though. He's anything. He's so far from being a primary ball handler for this group. He's basically being utilized as a pseudo wing right now a kind of a Swiss army knife uh, and, and more so of a, a defensive ace when he may throws him out there. Uh, yes, he's been more of a connected tissue piece offensively now kind of being featured as that five man, uh, you know, on the short roll playing out of the dunker spot, all the different areas that we're seeing them use him offensively right now. But I do, I would very easily point to that concern about the spacing issues, because I do think that is one other area in addition to the, uh, having an athlete out there that Jalen can run and gun with in transition. I do think that the floor being a little bit more open with the true five out spacing has further unlocked a little bit more for Jalen green. And I think that's one I mean, area where when you look at the argument for Alper and Shingun needing to develop a three point shot, there are plenty of times earlier this season where you can look at Shingun who would have the ball at the top of the key, looking to make a play, looking to do something and the big is just all the way down at the free throw line, right? Not only does that prevent, you know, uh, off-ball movement, off-ball cutting, off-ball actions, it's just, it's one of those where if you can get away with giving a guy that much space and he's not a threat to knock down that three ball, then it does kind of confound some of the things you want to be able to do offensively, let alone the fact that when Jalen would have the ball in his hands, if Shingun is occupying the dunker spot, and then you also have a Min Thompson who's trying to occupy the other baseline, the other dunker spot, it, it can, I think, get a little clogged, a little crowded. It, and we saw exactly that we saw exactly that happen earlier this season in the minutes where Jay Sean Tate and a Min Thompson shared the floor, yeah. or Tate and a Min with Shingun. If you have two non shooters out there and you're not playing really high level basketball with guys cutting and moving well without the basketball and catching the defense when they're asleep you run into issues if guys are just standing around doing nothing yeah i would agree with that but i would just say as i indicated last segment it's largely a concern that we already knew both of those guys are going to work to improve their shot it's still very early in their careers a men in particular so long term when you're trying to win a title a few years from now if both of those guys stay at the shooting level they are now, would it be difficult to play them together? Would there be consequences for spacing? 
sure. But I think that's not something that's new over the past two weeks. This has always been something that the Rockets needed to develop. It's just the stuff like perimeter shooting, especially for guys that haven't done it before, that's not typically something that you fix on the fly during a season. That's more off seasons of work, slow and steady progressions, as opposed to, you know, everybody loves to call Ben Sullivan a guru and pretend that he can just find something magical on the fly one tweak and snap your fingers. It's done. It typically doesn't work that way. It's slow and steady, methodical. So, you know, the concerns are valid. I'm not saying they are. It's just more that for me, I mean, those were already there even before this Jalen breakout. I, I guess so, I, maybe it'd be better if I said, because there's this argument, right? Is it, is it correlation? Is it causation with the Rockets being better since the Shingun injury? Like all that. I, I just think there's something to be said for maybe there, yeah. there is a little bit more space to operate with when you have a Min Thompson out there. He's just a different presence, right? There's less And then he going brings those other gifts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it, it is a different kind of a different play style. The Rockets have played even faster, as Ime Udoka already said in segment one um, when he was talking to Matt Thomas and Ross Villarreal. They are playing even faster than they were playing when they were playing faster to start the all you know post All Star break. So they have leaned even further into this identity by necessity since Shingun mm-hmm. went down due to injury. But I do think the Rockets were on the way towards unlocking something really special with this newfound kind of team identity. The more pace, really trying to highlight the gift of some of the athletes on the roster like Jalen, like Amin, like Cam Whitmore. Those numbers, the three-man lineup data for Jalen, Amin, and Cam when they're on the floor together, that's why Ime Odoka was going to that trio so much when he was riding kind of the hot hand of the bench unit He'd bring Fred out, he'd bring Dylan out, and having those three guys out there at the same time was insane to watch the Rockets go from being kind of a half-court preferential team, a team that wants to run, you know, a lot of actions through Shingun and, you know, really set up in the half-court to suddenly they go to being a terror in transition with that three-headed monster. Maybe the bridge can be Cam Whitmore. That's an important variable, and we should note that Cam has not played a single minute since Alper and Shingun went down. Yeah. So we haven't had any data to look at there. And Ime said before the OKC game that Cam could be coming back before the three-week timetable. Well, the first game that Cam missed was the 12th in San Antonio. Three weeks is next Tuesday. So if he's going to come back before three weeks, it's either Friday in Utah or Sunday at home against Dallas. So it sounds like Cam is close. He has advanced in his drills this week. And of course, Cam is someone who does have that elite athleticism, but can shoot at a high level. So of course, we're not going to get to see the rest of this year. doesn't sound like now Shingun has not been officially ruled out for the year, so I guess we can't say it's 100%. But um, I, I do wonder he'll, he'll if... Be, he'll be back for the first round series against the Thunder yeah. or the Nuggets. Don't worry about it. <laughs> there you go. And we should note that that Jalen quote... Well, it wasn't a quote, but uh, Kelly Eco was paraphrasing what he said about playing with Amin Thompson and Cam Whitmore. He included not just Amin, but Cam as well. And kudos to Jalen. I mean, these players are really smart. And it sounds like Jalen identified exactly what he needed, or at least a big part of it, to get going. So first off, hat tip to to Jalen for correctly identifying that. But the other part of that is Cam Whitmore. I mean, a man as great as that pairing has been with a man and Jalen, that's only 50% of it. There's also Jalen and Cam. And so I'm sort of curious to see, you know, what they look like if uh, Ime can sort of highlight those minutes a bit more once Cam gets back and perhaps in the short term, because I don't know if by next season it's reasonable to turn a man or Shingun into, you know, a consistent, 35 plus percent shooter from three on volume, then can uh, Cam sort of be a bridge in the short term, a guy that, you know, you can play with Jalen and Shingun to give um, Jalen the best of both worlds, an elite athlete plus the playmaking of Shingun in the half court and to draw attention for more open looks. That could be a consideration as well. So that's, that's what's really useful is that as much as it's been Jalen and men of late, Cam has some of those same strengths as well. We just haven't seen them because of the injury. So hopefully down the stretch of this year, we can see Jalen and Cam together a little bit. And then next year, even if the fit with the men in Shingun is a little clunky at times because of the lack of spacing, number one, the Rockets, I don't think next year they're really going to try to contend. So it's not something that's necessarily a fatal flaw. But beyond that, they do have Whitmore as something of a band-aid to at least give you a little bit of the best of both worlds, if you will, while you're still working on Shingun and Amen with the jump shots. Absolutely. Now, la- last thing that we have here that we have to address, uh, Draymond Green decides to open oh, his okay. mouth and talk about the Rockets yet again. Now, here we go. So here's what happened. In the aftermath of the Rockets' really big win against the OKC Thunder, Tari Eason took to Instagram, and he directly called out the Golden State Warriors. Here we go. 
Warriors! Come out to play! Warriors! Come out to play! Yeah! It's like that! I love Tari Eason. I love his energy. I love his charisma. He is such a joy to be around. He's such an infectious personality, so animated. Um, and of course, he's a competitor at his heart, right? So even though he's not out there with his guys, he's supporting them. He sees the run that they're on, and he's you know he's there uh, you know every step of the way throughout his rehab process, supporting this team, all that good stuff. So that happened. And then Draymond Green, who again, very quick reminder here. No, I don't give a damn about the Rockets. Draymond doesn't give a damn about the Rockets. Seems like you do. Took to his podcast to respond to Tari Eason. Like that's when I saw it, I wasn't surprised at all. I am a little surprised that he hasn't played in the game since January 1st. And so it's kind of tough to come out, yell and come out and play, and you're not going to play. It puts a lot of strain on your guys. Like you can't get out there and help them. Ben, the cognitive dissonance here, the irony. Oh, of yeah. A guy it, like Draymond Green saying, you're not out there to help your guys. It puts strain on them when yeah. he constantly gets himself ejected. A very controllable variable. Yes, that's the thing. He is choosing to do this to his teammates. You cannot tell me that he's so out of control that he doesn't know the potential consequences of his actions when he decides to do something dirty that might get him thrown out. Or if he jaws to the official when he already has a technical foul, there is no way he's unaware of that. He just doesn't care. It's an impulse. And he gives in to that, which I guess to each his own, but then to lecture to someone like Charlie Eason, who by the way, did not choose to have a fractured leg. It's just silly. Look, I mean, I guess at a superficial level, you can say that if a guy isn't playing, don't participate in the trash talk. To me, that's like, come on, there's no, there's no fun in that. Like the game is better when guys are, you know, talking back and forth on social media. We get to have some fun with it. To me, it's good for the league. But even if you are going to take an old school, oh, you're not out there, so don't say anything. Even if your teammates are out there, whatever, it's not you. Whatever, but at least be consistent. If you're going to make that argument, don't be the guy that then chooses to literally leave his teammates high and dry. He literally we, had Steph Curry almost like in tears yeah, four minutes into the game against the magic because he yeah. got himself ejected. Steph was not, shaking his head. Yeah, frustrated. I mean, you, you've got to imagine like his teammates, his coach Kerr. I'm sure they're fed up with his antics, right? Look, whatever the, whatever therapy sessions, you know, like mandated therapy sessions that Draymond had to do, you know, per, per his agreement with Adam Silver and the NBA, to be able to come back after his last, you know, little little sabbatical. Clearly, they didn't work. Draymond, let's get you the help that you need, Draymond. Go to betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. You'll get 10% off your first month because clearly it didn't work before, man. This is it's and the fact that he, he just can't he can't stop talking about the Rockets either. That's the best part. Well, no, and one little thing to keep in <laughs> One little thing to keep in mind, a few weeks ago, he did go out of his way on his podcast to compliment Tari Eason. That's a subplot as one of the young guys that he really likes. And so my guess is that superficially, um, he might feel, you know, like his ego was a little bruised that a guy he went out of his way to praise a few weeks ago. And of course, Draymond mentioned seeing some things in Tari Eason that reminded him of himself when he was coming into the league. Now seeing that same guy turn around a few years later, and even if it wasn't a direct shot at Draymond, we know Draymond feels a certain sense of ownership, or at least he should with the Warriors as one of their best players. Maybe he doesn't feel a sense of ownership based on the fact that he keeps getting thrown out of these games. But the point is, I think on some level underneath it all, he might feel a little bit burned that he went out of his way to compliment Tari. And now here's Tari, you know, saying something that sort of sounds like it's not really slander. It's just... You know, it's hype is what it is. It's trying to build intrigue for that April 4th game. And, you know, we'll see how it turns out. Hopefully well for the Rockets. But I think that subplot is part of it, too. And maybe Draymond should start worrying about the Rockets. You want to know why, Ben? Coaches are dogs. All the players are dogs. I'm a dog. That's just what it is. Dogs all up and down the roster. They're all dogs. On that note, Ben, you know the drill. Dogs. Everybody know where to try. Dog, there we go. Dogs indeed. Dog, it's dogs all the way down. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben, you know the drill. Everybody know where to track you down at. 
Yep. Uh, ben Dubose on Twitter, uh, the logger line on Twitter, the Rockets Wire on Twitter slash X, and of course, rocketswire.usatoday.com for all your daily Houston Rockets news coverage. That's going to do it for another edition of Locked on Rockets. As always, thank you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. Just search Locked on Rockets. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening via Apple Podcasts, a five-star review helps us out tremendously. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.